Hey everybody, it's me Robert again, and as I promised, this is going to be my top 20 favorite anime characters list part 2. And this is like my 8th or 9th time doing this because I've had so many freaking problems and interruptions and messed up videos. But that's besides the point. Okay, I'm gonna get started right away. At number 10 is Shaoran from Subasa Reservoir Chronicles. The reason why I like Shaoran's character is because well, he is probably the most, the single most determined and kind character I've ever seen because his love for Sakura, his love for Princess Sakura is so strong and so deep that he would willingly give up his relationship with her in order to save her life and get her memories back. And that, that to me is just wonderful that he would do that in order to save her without hesitation he gave up his relationship with her in order to rescue her that is awesome okay at number nine is roy mustang from full metal alchemist um the reason why i like roy mustang's character is because he is this serious and strict and um high-ranking military guy who only cares about getting promotions but at the same time he's also very kind and caring about his subordinates and he also is um silly sometimes and also his power is the ability to snap his fingers and he can create explosions that's freaking awesome okay next at number Eight is Apache Hopachi from History's Strongest Disciple Kenichi. Apache is this giant, super strong Muay Thai master, and Muay Thai is a martial arts which is which was created for killing and destroying people. And yet Apache, who has monstrous strength and is a master of Muay Thai, uses his Muay Thai to protect people instead. Also, Apache is very gentle and kind and caring. Unlike, um, he's gentle and kind and caring, unlike most of the, uh, um, fighters on History's Strong Disciple Kenichi. And so I think that's what makes Apaji different, is that he can use a martial arts that was meant for killing and destroying, and he uses it to protect instead. That's why I like Apache's character, is that he's, like, strong but gentle at the same time. Okay. Next at number seven is Ipo Makinauchi from Hajime no Ipo. Ipo is, he starts off as this really wimpy, um, character who always gets picked on and bullied and stuff like that. And then one day he meets the boxer, a boxer named Takamura, and he goes to Takamura's gym and meets it, and he meets the coach of the gym, Coach Kamigawa, and he starts training to become a boxer and eventually he becomes a professional boxer and he discovers that he has a talent for boxing and even though he's a featherweight he has a heavyweight's right if anybody gets hit by this right they're pretty much going down so he can pretty much beat any other featherweight fighter and he's really strong and he eventually becomes the uh, um, Japanese featherweight champion okay next on to number six is Jing, Jing from King of Bandits. Jing is this mysterious, cool, funny, um, master thief who can steal pretty much anything, and all the girls fall in love with him wherever he goes, and he's kind of like a vagabond where he comes, he steals, and then he leaves, and he is also very, um, kind and caring like he'll help people out and he can steal pretty much anything they even say that he could steal stars right out of the sky or a maiden's heart and stuff like that and so i think that's what makes jing's character really cool that he can steal pretty much anything he's like the best thief ever okay next at number five is lucy from elf and me the reason why I like Lucy's character is because she is this really cruel and evil and cynical person, and yet, at the same time, she, when 
at the end of the anime, you find out that she actually is in love with the main character guy, who I can't remember his name, but she's in love with him, and so she cares about him. So you see that she has a soft side to her, and that she's not all evil, but mainly she'll just kill you. So that's why I like her character, is that she's so brutal and merciless, and yet also she has um, a gentler side to her. Okay, next at number four is Hiei from Yu Yu Hakusho. The reason why I like Hiei's character is because he was born into this into this demon tribe where the demons the demon tribe that he was born into was a tribe of nothing but female demons and he was the only male demon born into this female demon tribe and since the female demons saw this as an evil omen they um expelled him from where they lived they literally just tossed him um, they literally just tossed him into a, an abyss filled with super powerful demons, um, and pretty much left him to die. And yet, he he didn't die. He survived. And even though he was really young, he became super powerful. He became as powerful as a class A demon, even though he was a little kid. Um, and he wanted to get revenge on his people for, you know, expelling him. But then... Later on, he finds out that he has a sister, so what he does is, he gives up all of his power in order to gain the evil eye, the third eye, so that he could find his sister. And he finds her, and he finds out that she's living in the world of humans, and so he decides to watch over her and look after her and protect her. And then he meets Yusuke, and Yusuke fights him and defeats him, and then later on, he a um, joins Yusuke, he joins Yusuke's group and becomes a uh, ally and helps in the fights to come, and he gains the uh, Black Dragon technique, which is a technique that allows him to increase his strength every time he uses it, so he, he literally started off as a super powerful demon, and then he lost all of his strength just to find his sister, and then he got it all back through fighting and training and stuff like that. And so that's why I thought it was really cool about Hiei's character. Okay, next at number three is Toshiro Hidugaya from Bleach. The reason why I like Toshiro's character is because he is a child prodigy. Um, before he became a soul reaver, he had really powerful spiritual pressure but he didn't know how to control it, and so he was hurting the people around him using his spiritual pressure, but he didn't even realize it. So, so what he did was, in order to gain control of his spiritual energy, he joined the Soul Reaper Academy so that he could um, learn how to control his powers and get stronger, and then he graduated from the Soul Reaper Academy and became a Soul Reaper, and then he quickly became the youngest captain of the 13 Court Guard squad. And Toshiro, he uses ice. His Zanpakuto is really badass. It's it's called Hyarumaru, and uh, and the Shikai allows him to summon this ice dragon. And then in his Bankai, he gains these like wings of ice, of wings of wings and tail of ice, and it it's really badass looking, and he's really powerful. He can fight on even footing with Hini Shimaru, who's the captain of Squad 3, and he can also fight on even footing with the uh, third Espada. In fact, he pretty much had that fight won. And Shinsuke Kyaraku, the captain of Squad 8, who is like one of the strongest captains, said that Toshiro in about 100 years will be as powerful as himself. And so, 100 years is, isn't very long for Soul Reapers. So he's literally saying that in about 10 years, Toshiro will become one of the most powerful captains out of all the 13 Court Guard squads. So I think that's really badass. Okay, and next at number 2 is Itachi Uchiha from um, Naruto. The reason why I like Itachi's character is that, again, he's a genius. Just like Toshiro, he's a genius. He, at the young age of 8 years old, he became a Joni. And he was able to defeat pretty much anybody else. And he was always super powerful. And then he um, found out that his family was going to 
plan an attack against Kanoha. The Uchiha family were planning on taking over Kanoha. So what Itachi did was he was given a mission by the Hokage to wipe out his entire clan. So in order to save the village, in order to protect his village, he wiped out his own clan, killed his mother and his father, and killed all of his um all of his brethren and family just to protect the village. So for the one person who he couldn't kill, the one person he loved above all else was his younger brother, Sasuke, and then, after killing his family, he left, he made his brother believe that he was evil, and he left the village, and he joined the Akatsuki to spy on the Akatsuki, he, so he literally joined the Akatsuki to, um, try and defeat them from the inside, and in the end, he died, and he died in order to m help save his brother to make his brother stronger. <sighs> Unfortunately, Sasuke made his death useless. Freaking douchebag. Anyway, so that's why I like Itachi's character, is that he pretty much sacrificed everything to protect his village and his younger brother. Okay, now, for the finale. For the final one, number one on my top 20 list of favorite anime characters is Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece. I love Luffy's character. I just like his character a real lot. He's a really good character because he he starts off as a little kid and he um accidentally eats this devil fruit called the gum gum fruit and he becomes a man made out of rubber. And it fits his personality perfectly because Luffy is like rubber. He's always optimistic. He's always bouncy and happy and stuff like that. And, like Rubber, he always bounces back. Even after his brother died, he was able to bounce back and become stronger. And, also, I like the fact that Luffy would pretty much do anything to protect his family, friends, and crewmates. He, um, challenged the entire world government just to save one of his crewmates. And, he also, um, he also said that, um, if... Um, Silver's Rayleigh told him about the, uh, um, told him, if Silver's Rayleigh, who was the first mate of Gold Roger's crew, if he told Luffy the secret to, um, One Piece, he would quit being a pirate, because it would be no fun if he knew what was it at the end of the adventure. Because nobody would want that. Nobody would want to know what's at the end of the, um, Grand Line. It wouldn't be an adventure if they did know. So, anyways, that's really cool. And also, when Luffy found out that his brother was imprisoned in Impel Down, he broke into Impel Down, which is the world's most secure prison. And he even fought, uh, um, he fought Warden Magellan, who was a man made out of, um, venom. He ate the venom venom fruit and became a man made out of poison. And Luffy pretty much sacrificed his arms just to fight him. And Luffy was poisoned by him. Really, He was really badly poisoned by him. And Luffy only had like a 3% chance of surviving. And yet he survived. And um, even more incredible was that he was able to um, recover from the poison in only 20 hours. And it was supposed to take 40 hours for him to recover from the venom. And yet he did it in, um, 20 hours. <sighs> Unfortunately, though, he wasn't able to save his brother. But even after his brother died, he was able to recover from his brother's death and become stronger. And he trained with, um, Silver's Rayleigh himself. And now Luffy is just ridiculously powerful and mature and strong. So that's why I like his character. Okay, now, if you guys have any suggestions for my next top 20 list, Go right ahead and say it. Okay, bye. See you guys later.